Hello my dear friends, happy new year and welcome. In this new episode we are going to show you this new addition, this robot, this mecha, because mechas could not be absent from any classic sci-fi anime, right? It is completely set up with the proper shaders and of course following the same techniques we saw in the previous episode it has this kind of shyness that was typical from 90s, 80s, 90s anime which you could see especially in very reflective surfaces like metal or glass crystal whatever no new developments on the shader side here, but uh, what I can show you is the way this mecha will be conformed. My approach so far in this case is, since this robot is conformed of only rigid, completely solid parts, it is by itself a skeleton. So every piece is completely set with their corresponding hierarchy and pivot points so that they could move in the same way a proper bone could work. So I can save a lot of work compared to setting all these pieces into an armature. Now I have some little animation prepared, so I can move the sliders to show you a little more interesting post. And on the left viewport you can see also that I have prepared some little animation with the camera. So why did I do that? Because of what I'm about to show you right now, which has to do with how are we going to be generating the footage. So now we have this little animation for the robot and for the camera, but we have this little issue that we cannot just do everything at once and we have to make some passes. The background is going to be rendered at 24 frames per second, whereas the robot is going to run at 12. So now we are going to the compositing module. I have prepared this setup for exporting the different passes. So now I'm going to activate in the render settings this bloom, freestyle and ambient occlusion passes. And now I'm connecting the nodes for the corresponding passes to generate the files. In the case of the occlusion pass, I'm going to make this filter to harden the ambient occlusion shadows so they work more like a typical third tone of shading in anime. Now here I apply this inverted alpha because if, if I don't, the ambient occlusion generates this black background that is going to give me many troubles when I'm trying to compose the shot. So I'll connect this node and render the animation. And now we just wait until all of the frames are rendered. Now for rendering the space background, uh, I'm going to uh, hide the mecha, just uh, give this a sphere with the space texture. And for this render, I'll need to make it at 24 frames per second. So in time stretching, I'm going to change it to 200 and I'm gonna need to also double the frame range, so 120. Now I'm going to change the output folder and we're ready to go. And now you can see that it's rendering every frame of the camera movement on the background. Now I'm moving to HitFilm Express where I'm going to compose the shot. Here I have imported all the elements, all of them rendered as image sequence, which is safer than rendering to video. And I can import them without any problems. All of them have 12 FPS except for the background shot and of course the compositing project itself that of course must be at 24 also to faithfully reproduce the element with the most frame rate. So here we have the space layer, you can see now the movement of the camera. Then we have the color layer, now the occlusion pass, you can see this little difference it makes in some of the shadings. Now the line layers, uh, here I do some little tricks to manipulate a little the color of the lines and on top the bloom pass. So here our shot is complete and now we just have to render it. 
here we can just use uh, this YouTube uh, quality. Of course, for something more definite, we, we should try some uh, lossless compression. And here we can see how the video is being generated. And here is the final result. So that's all I have for today. And we'll see you in the next episode with some new interesting development. So see you next time. Adios.